Hello, my front porch friend. Sure does feel good to be back by the creek. Especially on a fall day like this, you can feel its effects. The leaves are falling and it's definitely got a, a nip of cool in the air. But the creek sounds good. It's a good place of peace. Especially on a day like this, it just feels right to be here. And I'm glad that you are with me. I have a word I want to share with somebody that's watching right now, that's facing in a situation that just feels overwhelming. Maybe it just feels too big. And I want to declare this word into your life, mine, but I want to declare this word over our nation today too. I remember the first time I ever received this word or heard it from the Lord in a personal way. I actually remember it very well because it was 25 years ago. And I was facing in that season of my life, I guess it what I would just call the deepest place of betrayal that you can ever know in a marriage. And I was sitting up in this room upstairs by myself and I had just heard this news and in the place of my deepest pain, I remember just speaking to God and saying, God, say something to me. Tell me your word about this. And I opened my Bible and my eyes fell on these words. It was out of Second Chronicles, the 20th chapter and the 15th verse. And it was in the King James Version then for me. And it said this, oh, how I remember it. I heard the Lord say in this word, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude for the battle is not yours, but God's. Oh, I can still remember the hope that flooded my heart that night when I realized my father not only knew of my situation, but he was fighting for me. And I want that same hope to fill your heart today. As you hear these words fresh from your father, he knows what you are dealing with right now, with your husband, with your children, with your body or your finances or something in your life. He knows. He knows what our nation is dealing with today. And the spiritual warfare that is over our nation, unlike anything I think probably any of us have ever experienced before. But he has something to say about it. And whenever we, are, we individually or nationally are facing something, a spiritual warfare that's just too big for us, when we let him, when we look to him, he tells us always, don't be afraid. You will never find God in the place of fear. You will never find God in a place that he himself doesn't know what to do. That's why he tells you and me and Jehoshaphat, don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed by the enemy and what he's doing. This battle is not yours. It's God's. I remember a few weeks ago, I shared with you actually the story that surrounds this verse initially. It's found in the entire chapter of 2 Chronicles 20. In fact, I want you to go read it today again. I, my favorite thing is to read it in the New Living Translation. Go read the whole chapter, every word of it, for this hour that you are living in personally and that we are living in nationally. Just in a quick nutshell, just for the sake of hearing it again tonight with fresh faith and fresh ears to hear what the Spirit's telling us, I want you to remember the context. It's Jehoshaphat, King Jehoshaphat, King of Israel, and he's facing three armies that are heading toward them at the same time. They are outnumbered so much so that it is utterly impossible for Israel, to, for Judah, to face this enemy. And so the Bible says, and you'll read it when you see it. I mean, you'll see it when you read it tonight. It says this, Jehoshaphat first calls a fast, calls all the nation to a fast, 
Then they began to pray together, standing together as a large group of people with their eyes toward heaven. And they began to pray and seek God because there is no other hope for them unless there's an intervention from God. Nothing else. There is no way. So they're praying, God, they're they're laying out this situation that they're facing about the enemy. Then they say the beautiful words we've said so many times, God, we don't know what to do. So our eyes are on you. In fact, let me go up here. Look at my pulpit I've set up for myself today. It's kind of pretty, isn't it? It's a big old piece of driftwood that just actually came in, floated down the creek in a flood. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that pretty? So this is going to be my pulpit for the day. I'm going to read you this whole word of, I mean, scripture, this verse of what God says to Jehoshaphat. Because when Jehoshaphat says those words, God, we don't know what to do. We don't. But the key is that Jehoshaphat says, but our eyes are on you. See, that's, that's the difference it makes when everybody comes to the place in a life where we don't know what to do. It's just that some people sit and worry, like we talked about last week, or some people just turn to other people or they turn to other scenarios. But when you find somebody that says, I don't know what to do, so I am going to lift up my eyes to the Lord. I'm not going to sit around here bound in fear and hopelessness. I'm going to lift up my eyes and say, God, we are looking to you. When you let God know our hope, is in you, then he will answer. And listen to what he says to Jehoshaphat and to you and me and to America. This is what he says. Then the spirit of the Lord comes upon one of the men standing there, a prophet who was a Levite. And in verse 15, the prophet begins to say this, and it's the word of the Lord through this man. He says, listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem and America. I threw that in there. Listen, King Jehoshaphat. And listen, front porch friend, this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid and do not be discouraged by this great army, for the battle is not yours but God's. Now watch this. Tomorrow, march out against them. You will find them coming up through the ascent of Ziaz at the end of the valley that opens into the wilderness of Jeruel. You will not even need to fight. Take your positions. Stand still and watch the Lord's victory. Uh. Look at this. It's so good. Stand still and watch the Lord's victory. He is with you, O people of Judah and Jerusalem and America. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Go out against them tomorrow for the Lord is with you. Powerful, powerful. Such hope. Such hope. Here's the, what I love about those verses. Just to remind you again, the Lord says to them, Number one, calm down. Don't be afraid. This battle is too big for you. This is a spiritual war. And it's not yours. It's God's. And the good thing about those battles with, with, for God is our Jesus has already defeated our enemies. I love it. Colossians says he spoiled powers and principalities. Those forces in the heavens that are fighting right now. Jesus has spoiled powers and principalities. He's made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. So he's already won over the enemy. We stand in that victory. So that's our promise. Second thing he says to him, and I love this, is he pulls the curtain on the enemy and he exposes where the enemy is and what he's doing. Remember, we just read that. That's why he says, listen, he says, you go out against them. Here's where he's coming up. He's coming up over here through the valley of, of, of whatever that was, Jerez. What was it? He says, he's coming up over here through the ascent of Ziaz at the end of the valley that opens up into the wilderness of Jeruel. In other words, God is pulling the curtain. The enemy can't even hide from the people of God. He, God's, God is sitting from heaven saying, okay, I see what you're doing, and I see what your plan is, and I see where y'all are. The, the enemy can't hide from God. He can't hide his little plans and schemes to destroy God's people. God's sitting there going, I see where you are, and I see what you're doing. And whenever he finds somebody with an ear what the Spirit is, to hear what the Spirit is saying, God says, hey, sons and daughters, here's what the enemy's doing, and here's where he 
is. In other words, when you've got somebody praying, when you've got somebody, when you're seeking God over your family, over your children, over this nation, when you are praying, there's somebody seeking God with their eyes on God, he'll find that conduit of faith to speak to and through. He'll reveal the enemy to you personally for your family. To your, for your ministry, for your husband, for your children. It does, he will show you what the enemy is doing. He'll show you where he's hiding. I'm praying right now in Jesus' name, even in this nation, Lord, just reveal. Let there be exposure. Let the enemy be at a place where he cannot hide. And then the Lord says, whoa, and I love this. Okay, number one, don't be afraid. I'm going to fight this. Number two, here's where the enemy is and what he's doing. I'm going to expose what he's doing. Number three, I love this. Number three, he says, verse 17, listen, children, sons and daughters of God, you don't need to fight. Don't fight, this, don't fight this in the flesh. Don't run out there in the flesh and start fighting this enemy that's coming up toward you or you'll be devoured. So God's telling them, you don't need to handle this on your own. You'll be devoured. He says, take your positions, stand still, and watch the Lord's victory. <laughs> In other words, you can only do that when you know you've got a word from God. When you know God's fighting for you, you can take a place of spiritual rest and expectation in waiting. In other words, God says, you don't need to fight. You need to stand still and watch the Lord's victory. That's what waiting on God looks like. The enemy's coming toward you. You don't know what you're going to do. You've got a word from God that says he's going to fight for you and win. And then this is his instructions to you. Stand still. Stand still. And watch the Lord's victory. Here's what watch the Lord's victory looks like. In other words, you're waiting on God. The enemy's coming, but he's telling you, don't fight him. You wait on me. You, here's, here's what waiting on God looks like. Waiting, first of all, let me tell you what waiting on God doesn't look like. In case I need to remind you. I think I've told you before. I'm telling you again. Waiting on God does not look like somebody saying, what you doing? Well, I'm just waiting on the Lord. I'm just waiting on the Lord. Oh, I'm just waiting. It, does, it doesn't look like that with just some sluggish attitude, just waiting. It, it also doesn't look like somebody worried. What you doing? Oh, I'm just waiting on the Lord. Oh, is he going to come? I don't know. Oh, I'm just waiting on the Lord. Oh, that's not it either. That sounds like panic and fear. Oh, what's going to happen? Oh, what if this happens? Oh, what if that happens? Oh, God, what if the enemy gets here? And they... No, that's, that's not waiting on God. That's bound by fear and panic and intimidation. That's not, you won't find God in that. Waiting on God. I love what Bob Sorge, my friend, says. Bob Sorge says, waiting on God is one of the most violent things you can do in the kingdom of God, in the spirit realm. In other words, waiting on God doesn't look like waiting on God. No, it looks like doing everything you can do to stay in faith. Waiting on God looks like what God told the children of Israel. You stand still and you watch the Lord's victory. So if somebody tells, says to you, what you doing? You say, I'm waiting on the Lord. I'm watching. What? If you know somebody's coming, you're not waiting on them with just like slothful anticipation. No, when you're waiting on somebody that matters, you're waiting on them like this. You're watching the road. You're looking. Are they here yet? Come on. I'm watching. I'm waiting. That's what faith looks like. That's what, that's what waiting on God should look like. Somebody in your family says, what are you doing? I'm waiting on the Lord. I'm waiting on the Lord. I'm waiting on the Lord. Come on. The children of Israel that day, they weren't over there leaned up against the tree waiting on the Lord. No, they were sitting there taking their positions of faith. They were taking their positions of expectation and hope that they knew they'd heard from God. He was their only hope to begin with. So they stood with their eyes set on him, holding their position of faith, watching for the Lord and watching his great victory. Oh, my friend, I believe that is our word today. And the last thing I want to tell you about this is the Bible says that as they were waiting on the Lord and the Lord told them, he said, now tomorrow you march out against the enemy. You take your positions and stand still. Well, as they, if you read the story, the Bible says the next morning when they got up, the first thing they did was they were going to obey God. They start marching toward the enemy and getting ready to take their positions. But Jehoshaphat knew if they see the enemy, they may panic. So what did Jehoshaphat do? The Bible says he stops all of them on their way. And he says this very important thing, believe the word and believe the prophet and you will succeed. 
I believe that's your word tonight. Besides, the battle is not yours but God's. Here's your other word. Believe the word. And believe the prophet. And you will succeed. I'm saying that to every child of God for their lives individually. And I'm saying it to every intercessor for this nation. Believe the word of the Lord through the prophets of God and you will succeed. See, my friend, you have a promise in your situation. We talk about it often, don't we? When you have a promise from God, when you have a word to hold on to, believing looks like this. It looks like believing that word from God more than what you see in the natural. That's what believing looks like. I believe his word more than what I see. I believe his word. I believe his word. I believe he told me the battle is his, not mine. I believe that word more than what the news is telling me. I believe that word more than what I just heard my daughter or my son say to me. I believe what God said to me more than what I see in the natural. Because sometimes you look, if you look at your situation, you'll get overwhelmed. That's why huh, this verse pops up another place in the Bible when another boy got overwhelmed by something bigger than him, a little boy named David looking at Goliath. And when Goliath, the Bible says, was coming toward David, mocking him and jeering him, you are, he says, am I a dog that you're coming to me? And I love what little David says with his slingshot in his hand. The Bible says he's running toward the giant and he says to Goliath, you come at me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, but I come at you in the name of the Lord God of Israel. And then he basically says, and I'm going to knock you down and kill you. And then he says this, because the battle belongs to the Lord. In other words, little David was letting him know there's somebody bigger with me, somebody bigger than you are. He says, David's letting him know, I know I look small, but the one that's with me is mighty. And this battle belongs to him. And that's when God got in the rocks. Come on. When God heard that faith out of that little boy, God, the spirit of God took over that slingshot and God led that rock right where it was supposed to be. And maybe today you're, you're facing something. You just think, Karen, I'm looking at this situation right now. And I, you're just looking at it even within our nation. You're just saying, I don't, I don't even see a way. I don't, I don't know the way this, there's just no way. Sometimes in life, in your marriage or your children or your home, or your, it's just like in the natural, there's just no way. I don't see a way. That's no problem for God either. I love this verse. I'm going to look it up for you right now. It's in Psalms 77. And I heard this verse this week. It was so powerful. Psalms 77. In verse 19, and I'm reading in the New Living Translation. Look at this. Look at this. I love this verse. It's meant a lot to me for years. This is what it says. Your road led through the sea, your pathway through the mighty waters, a pathway no one knew was there. I love that. In other words, when there is no way, that's no problem for God either. He says here, your road led through the Red Sea. He says, your pathway through the mighty waters, a pathway no one knew was there. In other words, Moses is standing in front of the Red Sea and all the children of Israel see is the Red Sea. Behind them, they can hear the chariots of Egypt coming on strong. But all of a sudden, when Moses lifts up his eyes to God like Jehoshaphat did, the same God Jehoshaphat, looked at was the same God Moses was looking at. And Moses lifts his eyes up to God and begins to call on the Lord. And the Lord says, lift up your rod. That's when God got in the rod was when we lift up our eyes. And when Moses lifted his rod, God made a way through the sea, a way no one knew was there. Father, I pray for my friend right now that's watching, that's overwhelmed by the forces of evil that's been coming against her or him. 
Lord, I pray for her where she has felt discouraged. I pray for my friend where she's felt filled with fear and trembling today and worried or, or heavy laden or just battling for hope. Lord, I pray for the one that just feels hurt by words and circumstances that are so overwhelming and she doesn't know what to do. Lord, I stand right here at this creek, me and my friend. And we are lifting up our eyes. And with Jehoshaphat and the children of Israel, we say like them, Lord, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. And Lord, we hear those words that you said to Jehoshaphat. Don't be afraid or dismayed by reason of this great army. The battle is not yours, but God's Father, I know you are fighting for us right now, so we will not be afraid. And Lord, you've already given a word to my friend. You've given a word to this nation. And we choose to believe the prophets. We choose to believe the men and women of God you have spoke through. And you've given words over America. You've given words to my friend. And Lord, I am asking you now to move by your spirit and make a way. One more time, God, part the waters. Make a way where there seems to be no way. Show my friend what to do, God. Show my na this nation what to do. And Father, we commit all of our cares to you, for you are the God of Jehoshaphat, Moses, and you are our God. And we trust you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. My friend, stay in hope. Believe the prophet. Believe the word of the Lord. This battle is his. You don't have to worry anymore. Trust him. Comment below and let me hear from you. Oh, how much your comments mean to me. I love to read them. I pray for you daily. I lift up those requests. I tell the Lord, Lord, you see every request on here. That's our point of contact. Lord, you see every request and I pray for your needs. And he hears and he knows and he can answer every one of them. You matter to God the most, and you matter to me. So stay in touch with me. Let's believe this will be a week of miracles. I love you, my friend, and I look forward to talking with you again in a few days. Until then.